My name is Corey, Corey Andrine. I'm the German cup tasting champion uh, for tasting coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. Uh, I'm originally from Washington, D.C., but I've been in Berlin for some years now. Uh, I have a specialty coffee shop called CK Cafe. I think a few of you have been there before. Um, and yeah, today I'm here with the Berlin Coffee Society and I'm going to talk a bit about coffee. Uh, we're going to do it in English first because there are a number of international visitors. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions later in German, if that helps. Uh, so, we're here at the Taste Festival and we want to talk about the taste of coffee. Uh, coffee is, is astonishing. Coffee, coffee has an incredible range of flavor. It, it actually is the most flavorful thing that humans consume. Uh, it has about 800 different aromatic compounds that, uh, that com comprise its flavor and its aroma, uh, which, which makes the 200 you find in wine really pale in comparison. Uh, so this begs the question, why do we never have a coffee that's so complex as wine? Or why is it, why is it such a rare occurrence? Why is it hard to find uh, coffees just that just have this kind of dynamic flavor to them? Um, and uh, that's, that's what I want to talk about today. So first of all, what is coffee? Uh, coffee starts out as the seed of, of a fruit, commonly referred to as a coffee cherry. Uh, a coffee cherry is a stone fruit, just like a cherry, an apricot, nectarine. Uh, it's all part of the same family. Um, which means coffee is itself a fruit product. Uh, freshness is, is, is of the utmost importance. So um, if, you, if you have a nice ripe coffee, it, sh it should uh, demonstrate the same, the same sweetness, the same tartness, uh, acidity, if you will, of a nectarine, a peach, any of these things. Um, and the reason we often don't taste this comes down to the way in which we handle the coffee and the way in which we prepare it. Uh, so first, I'd like to do a, a taste comparison demonstrating the importance of freshness, because freshness is really one of the most common things in coffee that's neglected. You know, it's years old, roasted months ago, ground for forever, sitting on a supermarket shelf. Uh, you wouldn't do this with any other kind of fruit product. Never. It'd be pretty gross. And with coffee, it often ends up being pretty gross. So, um, Pouring out the samples now. Uh, Any colors? Yeah, the, the different colors denote the, the two different samples. So coffee goes through different processes on its way from, from the tree to, to your cup. And each of these processes then has an effect on the flavor lifespan of the coffee. So a freshly harvested coffee, the green coffee, will have a, a taste, tasty lifespan of about six to eight months you have about six to eight months where the coffee is really at its most delicious. Now within these six to eight months, hopefully your coffee gets to a very skilled person who will roast it lightly to bring out these fruity characteristics. And after the coffee's been roasted, you have generally at most about two weeks to experience the, the full flavor potential of the coffee. So it, it's, it's, really, it's really a short amount of time in which to experience the coffee at its best. Um, where, where the most flavor is lost, though, is in grinding. Uh, within 10 seconds of grinding coffee, it loses 30% of its aroma. So 10 seconds is nothing. 10 seconds is nothing to lose a third of the flavor in something you're consuming. Uh, you know, so when you talk about 800 possible aromatics to lose a third of them in 10 seconds, that's a lot lost. So, uh, you know, the next time you reach for coffee that was ground a week or two weeks ago, just think about how much you're missing out on. 
So, the next thing I'd like to talk about is how we prepare the coffee. We've gone to all the trouble of making sure we've started with a quality product that's very fresh. We want to pay attention to how it's prepared. Um, most people today drink coffee that's made uh, with a machine. Problem is, machines aren't very good at making coffee. Uh, at least not yet. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you'll have a, a filter machine sitting at home. And most of us don't expect that to make good coffee. It underheats the water and then overheats the finished coffee. It's kind of known for making something unpleasant. Um, but I'd like to pick on the espresso machine a little bit because that's something that a lot of people enjoy and a lot of people consider espresso as kind of being the epitome of coffee. It's coffee at its best, at its purest. Um, and you know, these machines were never invented to make delicious coffee. They were invented for convenience, invented to make something easier for us. Uh, and especially the espresso machine. It was invented right at the end of the Second World War in Italy. The country was in economic tatters. They could only afford the cheapest coffees. Cheap Brazilian Arabica, which tastes a bit nutty and flat, uh, and cheap African Robusta is what they imported. And Robusta usually just tastes nutty and bitter. So this, this was the, the classic Italian espresso blend. Was it's kind of nutty Brazilian Arabica and this woody African Robusta. And so this machine was invented to, to make these cheapest of coffees as quickly as possible. And from my experience, the cheap and fast has never really been the best recipe for something of quality. Um, so for our next tasting, we are going to try a classic Italian espresso blend alongside a quality coffee. It's going to be a little bit. Ah, that's a shame. You want me to play a song? Uh, the espresso machine might not be very good at making our coffee. That's not to say it's impossible to make a good espresso. There, there's plenty of good espresso out there to be found. It, it takes a lot of hard work. It takes dedication. You have to be a little bit crazy. Uh, because the, the machine works against you more than it works with you. But you can find good espresso. Uh, problem is, the most flavorful coffees just really don't taste very good through the machine. Uh, the, the coffees with the, the most acidity, the greatest range of flavor, are, are either dulled by the machine, or, or these, this range of flavor is accentuated to the point where, where it's too strong. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's as overpowering as, as a brandy or a whiskey sometimes, if it's just really, really pungent. Uh, so, I guess maybe we can get to the, uh, the tasting of that afterwards. But, uh, but yeah, the, what I'm really trying to get across is that there needs to be a shift in the way uh, we think about coffee. Uh, as people who make it and as people who consume it, um, it, it is, it's produce, it's fruit, it comes from fruit, and, and freshness is, is really uh, of the utmost importance. And as with other fruit products, you can't just throw it into a machine and expect good results. Uh, it really takes, takes a little bit of love, it takes a good amount of knowledge, uh, and, and work. Uh, just, just as any other delicious gastronomical enterprise, uh, you know, any, no one would expect cooking to be easy or winemaking to be easy, and making coffee, delicious coffee, isn't easy either. Um, so, yeah, we'll be making more samples of filter coffee on the bar, uh, and uh, if you have any questions. Are you going to tell us how to make good coffee? <laughs> Am I going to? Well, uh, that's complicated, but uh, there are lots of different ways to make good coffee. Uh, if you start with freshness, that's, that's the best thing. If you have a pepper grinder at home, there's no reason not to have a coffee grinder. Uh, that would be my first suggestion. And then instead of using a machine, what else should I, could I, what I use? Um, any number of things. Uh, you can use uh, something as simple as, as a ceramic hand filter. French press is, is great. Um, yeah. 
really kind of uh, back to the basics approach seems to seems to be the easiest easiest way. Uh, you know, which is kind of a shame because we all like to uh, we all like to sit back and let let a machine do the work for us. But yeah, so, yeah exactly. <laughs> yes, what was the time difference between the two copies before uh, the difference in the freshness? Good question. Uh, not very much, actually. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the idea for doing this comparison came a, a little bit late, but the uh, the day the difference between roast dates was just a few days. They're they're both relatively fresh. They're both roasted within the past week and a half, uh, and one of them was ground uh, just about an hour before the other one. Yeah. Uh, how was how was the uh, the difference? Was there a noticeable difference? It was noticeable. Yeah. Yeah, probably, it probably wasn't overwhelming, but it's going to be within, I mean, even just in this short period of time, you are going to notice definitely that one should be, one should be flatter and the other one should definitely be a bit more lively. Anything else? Okay, well, then... Uh, I'm talking about the cup tasting. Cup tasting. I'm about what, uh, your specialty. I'm just I'm curious. I mean, if we're waiting, I don't know. Yeah, sure. Cup tasting. Well, like, what, you know, how you differentiate between different copies uh, and then the history of that. Um, well, sure. The, the technique of cup tasting was developed just as a, as a way to be able to taste a lot of coffee at the same time. Uh, it's very common for coffee dog defects. Uh, you can have a single bean that makes the whole cup tastes like a potato, which is gross. So that's something you, of course, want to avoid. So uh, yeah, it's basically sampling a lot of coffees with a spoon. OK. There. Just relax, that boy. Yeah.